Hello friends, I am Vijayan Velivaril. All are welcome to my YouTube channel. In session 14 video, we have seen how the station U managed the home signal failure. After leaving station U, the train is proceeding towards station V. And while the train is approaching the distance signal of station V, the loco pilot felt that the loco is going to give some trouble and he may not be in a position to proceed with the engine. So he wanted the train engine to be replaced or a relief loco to be arranged at station V. This video, that is session 15 video, we are going to see how engine failure is managed at the station V and also how trains are received on an obstructed road. Okay, now let us go to the diagram. Our train which has left station U is approaching station V. Thereafter it will go to station W. Already our train has experienced a failure of home signal at the station U and also this burbing, flickering etc. of starter signal. Now it has left the station U and it is approaching station V and let us see what uh, happens to the train at station V. Now let us have enlarged look of, enlarged view of station V. Train is coming from station U and it is approaching the distant signal of the station V. Here it is the station master's office. Here it is having road 1, road 2 and road 3, 3 roads. This one is upline, road 2 is upline and road 1 is downline. And here road 3 is a common loop. That is, if the train comes from the upline, it can be received on road 2 and also it can be received on road 3. From road 3, it will be dispatched like this. It will go in the upline. So for the down line, for the down trains, we can receive it on road 1 main line and also it can be received on road 3 it's a common loop so from here the train will be started like this and it will go so this is the yard of the station v now let us see what happens to our train our train has no stop at this station v it has to run through so after taking line layer from station w the station master has given through signal for this train on main line Road to upper main line, this has been given a run through, that is all the signals are actually green. When the train reached the foot of the home signal of the station, the local pilot calls the station master of V station through walkie talkie. If walkie talkie is not uh, working, he will call from the foot of this home signal, there is SPT. Through SPT, he will contact the station master. So, here on reaching here, he is not going through, but he is calling the station master after stopping here and informs that I want a relief loco. The loco has some technical problem and it, it cannot be attended by me. So, the train should have a relief loco. That is, it must have a new fresh loco for onward movement. If the train is received and stopped here, what will be the problem? Further trains coming at the, from upline, all these trains are to be passed through road 3. And you know, the speed will be 15 kmbh. What can be done by the station master? He can receive this train on road 3, so that the trains coming at the back of this train from upline can be run through or received on road 2 and it can be dispatched. It will not suffer any detention because of this loop lines. If he wants to receive the train on road 3, he has to put back the signal. Then he has to wait for some time. Then he has to alter this point. Now the point is set for main line. It has to be set for loop line and then home signal should be taken off for road 3. Can this be done by the station master? Actually, once a signal taken off for a train should not be put back to on unless there is an emergency. Once a signal is taken off for a train, that is here for this train, the signal has been taken off. That should not be put back to on 
unless there is an emergency. So what is an emergency? Emergency is also defined as condition where there is a chance of an accident. So here actually there is no case of an accident. So he cannot put back the signal. See suppose in this line here there happens to be a LC gate and if this LC gate is infringed or if the LC gate is hit by a car or a bus, uh, bus is standing across this track. Then it's an emergency situation, the signals can be put back. So that the train may, will apply uh, emergency brake and may come and stop before this LC gate. So that is an accident case. So in such cases, that is to avoid another accident here, if the train is allowed to run through, it will hit the bus here. So to avoid such an accident, the signals can be the signals taken off can be put back to on. When the train is approaching this home signal, it is put back to on. What will be the uh, situation of the local pilot? He will be embarrassed. The signal has gone to red. That means he must stop. It is not possible for him to stop such a short notice. He must get some braking distance. Here he will not get that braking distance and there is a chance that he will apply emergency brake. When emergency brake is applied, there is a chance for the passengers getting hurt, fall down and in certain cases, there is a chance for derailment of this train. So it is to avoid such a situation, it is told that signals taken off for the train should not be put back to on position unless there is an emergency. But here the train has come and stopped here. The local pilot has contacted the station master and he is telling that the train cannot further move after reaching the station. You please arrange a relief loco. I, this train cannot be worked further. In that case, the SM can very well tell this local pilot that you be there. Now signals will be put back and the train will be received on road 3. So here there is no case of an emergency break. The train has come and stopped at the home signal. Now the station master will put back the signal and clear the signal for road 3. While coming on road 3, the station master informed the local pilot that he must stop short of the starter signal, giving room for one more loco. Why? Because when the train has stopped here, another loco, another fresh loco to be attached to this train, then only this can be moved. The train has come on road 3 and it is within the fouling mark and here from the starter there is space, space for one loco. This normally the length of one electric loco will be 20 meters. So the loco pilot will leave around 20 to 25 meters here. This is how we, our train is now received on road 3. Now our train has come and stopped on road 3 here. That is uh, from starter to the engine there is a gap of 25 meters so that an engine can be received here. Here the fouling mark uh, cleared so the train is now on road 3. When the loco pilot told that a relief engine is required, this engine cannot work the train further, the station master of V station already informed the controller that a relief loco is required. So he told that a relief loco will come from downline that is from station W. So a relief loco is arranged and that loco has come to the down distance signal of station V. The distance signal is not taken off, so the engine cautiously moved past the distance signal and approached the home signal. Now it is here at the home signal. Now how the engine can be received at this station? See, now this engine which has come at the home signal can be received either on road 1 or it can be received on road 3 directly on this train which is easy actually receiving the train directly on road 3 is easy 
because if it is received on rod 1 it is again to be shunted towards this direction and it to be brought on rod 3 if it is going to be received here home signal will not obey if it is going to be received on rod 1 it is okay because the line of reception is clear and also an adequate distance from here that is 120 meter from the starter signal is also clear so it can be received this signal will obey engine if it is to be received here this line should have been clear and also an adequate distance of 100 meters from here should have been clear then only this signal will obey nestor is when this track circuiting etc were not available it was the personal responsibility of the sm to ensure that the line is clear and also an adequate distance is clear before clearing the home signal but now there is interlocking and also the and the track circuiting is there so the track circuiting will not allow the taking of the home signal if the route is not clear of obstructions only if the route is clear of obstructions up to this up to including the signal overlap then only the home signal will obey now the home signal will not obey so that engine cannot be received here on clearing home signal for the signal failure we used the, the calling on signal here so here also there is a calling on signal so here is a calling on signal so see worker plate etc are there and also there is a signal post telephone also at the foot of the home signal so here is calling on signal so can we clear calling on signal calling on signal previously in the last video we have cleared it for signal failure here there is no signal failure signal will not obey only because the conditions are not satisfied there is no failure for clearing the calling on signal it is not required that it should be the line of reception should be clear if it is obstructed then also calling on signal will come so here we can receive the train on this obstructed road here road 3 is obstructed and on this obstructed road we can receive train on calling on signal here it is an engine engine can be received on calling on signal now what are the conditions we must ensure before clearing the calling on signal clearing of calling on signal ensures setting and locking of all these points that is 54 and 53 in reverse condition now a traffic stop should be posted at this point leading to this reception line that is road 3 to show hand signal also another stop should be posted 45 meters minimum 45 meters away from this obstruction with a hand danger signal which should be shot towards the engine which is coming to road 3 so if it is day he should show this red flag if it is night he will be showing red light of the hand signal lamp towards the engine which is arriving on road 3 so these two conditions are to be satisfied before clearing the calling on signal in case calling on signal is not available at the foot of the signal or if it is not working next alternative is signal post telephone as in the case of signal failure we can also use here SPT in this case before giving message through SPT station master should ensure that these points are set favorable for this loco and also a traffic stop posted at the point leading to the reception line and also another traffic stop at 45 meters away from this obstruction with the hand danger signal if these conditions are met Station master will give a message to the loco pilot through SPT supported by a private number that he can proceed to road 3. So that is how train will be received on SPT. Suppose SPT is not available or not working in that condition. The next alternative or the final alternative is obstruction memo that is T bar 509. In the case of signal failure, we used a T bar 369-3B. Here, for receiving train on obstructed road, the memo used is T bar 509. And this T bar 509 will also have a private number. This message, station master will 
write in duplicate and we will hand it over to the traffic staff who will hand over this memo one copy to the loco pilot and get his signature in the other copy then the staff will pilot the train to road 3 here also it must be ensured that the points are set clamped and padlocked for the route and also a traffic staff posted at the point and another staff at 45 meters away from the obstruction these two conditions that is one staff to show hand signal at the point leading to the reception line and also from the obstruction 45 meters another staff to show hand danger signal these are common for all kinds of reception on obstructed road whether it is calling on or SPT or obstruction memo these are the different methods used to receive a train or an engine on an obstructed road now the loco has come and stopped at the 45 meters away from this obstruction on seeing the hand danger signal it will stop here from here the loco will be hand signaled towards this formation while hand signaling the loco will come and stop at the 20 meters away from the train say wherever an engine is attached to a formation the loco must come and stop at 20 meters away from the formation from there it will be slowly hand signaled towards the formation now this loco has come close to this formation now who will couple this loco it is the responsibility of the crew to couple this loco and also connect the hose pipes that is the brake pipes and also sometimes there will be feed pipes normally this assistant loco pilot will come down and he will be doing all these works wherever an engine is attached or detached the works related to that engine must be done by the loco pilot or assistant loco pilot now in this formation here the first it is the engine next it is the dead engine and next the coaches it is decided to send this dead loco in this train itself now is there anything wrong in it no a loco if it is dead it should be attached next to engine so here the dead loco is attached next to engine and uh, normally the dead loco should be manned here the crew who worked this loco is there itself so they will be in charge of the dead loco now if this relief loco crew is working this train the dead loco crew will hand over bpc caution order etc to this relief loco crew now suppose in this station there is a coach to be attached and sent by this train that coach is a damaged coach but it is certified fit for uh, transporting by the txr in that case that damaged coach will be attached rearmost to this train dead loco will be attached next to engine whereas damaged coaches will be attached rearmost to this train okay now the formation is ready with the loco now glp guard and loco pilot will test the continuity you know the continuity test and all so they will test the continuity and when the train is ready to leave they will inform guard will inform station master v that the train is ready to leave guard has informed station master that the train is ready to leave the station master immediately contacts the controller and seeks permission for the train to start the controller says now see there is an important express coming from upline so you leave that express first we can send this train on road 3 after that express train but one problem before that express train a single engine is coming that engine should be detained at this station and the express should be given precedence so this express train should go first then we can send this train thereafter that loco can be sent if the loco is coming where it should be received it can be received from on road 2 and it can be shunted here or shunted here so that the passage will be clear for the express train which is following or we can receive this light engine we can receive this engine directly on road 3 behind this train that is our train is here and behind that train we can receive that on calling out signal 
so here calling on signal is available so it can be received directly on road 3 behind this express train here there is space for an engine so now the question is can it be done an engine should not be allowed on a track occupied by a passenger train here it is a passenger carrying train so the engine should not be allowed on this line suppose this train requires an engine that is it is to be attached here and it is to be pushed or if a coach is to be taken out from this train or a coach is to be attached to this train in that case only an engine is allowed on this track otherwise no engine should be allowed on a track occupied by the passenger train though there is space for the engine on this road 3 it should not be received on calling on it should not be received on road 2 and shunned in fact there is no space for this engine to be received here so the station master informs controller that the engine cannot be received and stopped at this station in that case the controller says okay you give run through to this light engine so he gave run through to this engine Thereafter, the express train comes, that express train also given run through on up to main line. Thereafter, our train started from road 3 and it left for station W. Now we have seen how station V managed the local failure as well as how the engine was received on an obstructed road and also other methods by which the reception on an obstructed road is possible. After much delay, of course, the train started from station V and it is proceeding towards station W. And we will see in our next video what is in store for us in the station W. Okay, let us see in our next video.